first was born, there was nothing out of the ordinary. Just a beautiful baby boy and two proud parents. Three years later, Mrs. Hines gave birth again. But this time, there was a problem. Just a few years ago, there would have been no solution. Today, there is. A word of warning, that the following story might be difficult to watch, but they do demonstrate the great advances that have been made in plastic surgery during the last few years. We're at the Animal Crackers Nursery School in West Cooksaki, New York. The students are a bright and happy bunch, but one of them, five-year-old Darren, the Heinz second child, was born with a special problem. His mother explained. Well, I had my first Dr. Helps was come up, like a stamp. They didn't hold there enough. It didn't bother me because it was a new doctor. Jeff. And the doctor that delivered him uh, came out and told me that he had a cleft palate, cleft lip, a uh, slight swelling on his forehead, and his eyes were uh, farther, far apart. Well, I've heard of cleft lips and palates. I knew they could be repaired, so it didn't bother me at all. And then they brought him to my room. He was a monster. He looked like a monster. I was afraid. I was afraid because uh, I had never seen anyone like that. I was afraid I couldn't help him. I just couldn't understand why God chose my son. He had no chance. Uh, if left, that is his. Then we got in contact with a pediatrician in Albany. And when Darren was released from the hospital with me, we took him up there. And then he sent us to a plastic surgeon in Albany. And they were very, very honest with us that uh, technically they could help us. But they couldn't guarantee the work. And I just about fell to pieces. Because I was worried that he'd be brain damaged or something like that. If it wasn't for them, we would have never met Dr. Woodsmith. Dr. Donald Woodsmith is a plastic surgeon who specializes in pediatric problems at the Institute of Reconstructive Plastic Surgery. Darren first came to us as a patient from upstate New York. Uh, he was approximately six weeks of age when he came down to see us first. He gave a history of, of being product of an apparently normal pregnancy, uh, no problems with delivery. And other than a rather horrendous uh, craniofacial deformity, appeared to be in pretty good physical shape. In Darren's uh, case, the deformity is perhaps best illustrated by showing the bony anomalies. Uh, you can see here that normally this is the upper jawbone. It should be joined to its fellow at the opposite side. This is the nasal cavity here. The green area here is, is actually brain that is protruding down between the two orbits. And by the pressure of its protrusion down here is actually forcing the orbits apart. This is the area of greatest potential risk to life for Darren. This brain protrusion is always liable to uh, become eroded, is liable to leak and the patient would develop meningitis, so that uh, an immediate uh, problem was to repair this area here. Uh, the other studies conducted on Darren gave us no reason why we should not operate on him at an early stage. Uh, on that basis, at the age of approximately four months, uh, we began the operative procedures on Darren, and the first operative procedure consisted of a lip adhesion. Two months later, when Darren was only six months old, he would undergo major surgery to reshape his skull. The operation had to be performed as soon as possible so that Darren's developing facial bones would grow properly as he got older. We knew the risk. Uh, anytime you go under anesthesia, there's a risk. We knew the ramifications. We knew that uh, he could possibly die. Uh, anything could go wrong. But I felt uh, if he was of the age where he could make a sound decision, he'd want the same thing. So. The operation takes six hours. In this operation, we open the anterior portion of the skull. This is done in conjunction with our neurosurgeon, Dr. Fred Epstein. And he lifts the brain so that we can have a clear access to the anterior cranial fossa, or that is the roof of the orbits or eyeball sockets. The remainder of the operative procedure involves repairing this defect here, where the brain is bulging into the nasal cavity and into the forehead. We have to bring the eyeballs and their sockets, the orbits, together. And this is done by carefully cutting down the lateral or side orbital walls here and here, cutting through the bone posteriorly here in the maxilla. We repair or remove structures from the midline and bring these two areas closer together. Now this closes the deficiency here and leaves us obviously with gaps here and gaps here. The gaps uh, on either side here and here are filled with bone that's obtained from the patient's hip. 
Darren was now on his way to being a normal boy. Without this surgery, Darren might not have lived to celebrate his first birthday. Since that time, Darren has undergone five additional operations. The prognosis for Darren at this point is that uh, he'll probably have another two to four operations uh, between now and the time he reaches adulthood. Uh, from the viewpoint of uh, achieving a normal and uh, fruitful life, there's no reason why Darren shouldn't um, behave in totally normal fashion and live as a normal adult. Darren is well on his way to doing just that. As a result of the surgery, his uh, growth and development appears to have been normal. And certainly, as we commonly find with these patients, his intellect is either normal or but normal. Darren is indeed a very bright child. And despite the ordeal he's gone through, Darren is emotionally sound and very happy. He's living the life of a normal boy, a life that only a few years ago was not have been possible. Darren has some special problems. He can help me, Darren. 